Was playing in tune, did you have anything, did you like practice with the tuner or how did you get your pitch so on? Oh, that's funny, man, you asked that. Uh, oh God, for a while everybody in town was have, would bring tuners and put them on the music stand. I thought, oh, that's what you gotta do. So I brought a, I practiced with a tuner at home and I get it so it would just be perfect. Right, every single note and I go to a gig and be out of tune. Like what's going on? And then, and then somebody said, "Wow, because every note's different." And then, in the international musician, that's the uh, union paper. Yeah. There's an ad there, uh, the tuning CD, and I thought, yeah, "Who's this guy?" I think his name Richard Swartz. And uh, the tuning CD. Well, it's it said 1995, but get it today for 11. I thought, and I'm a sucker for that, so mm -hmm. I, I ordered it, and I got it, and all it was was a bunch of drones. <laughs> and and I put that thing on and it was like ding it just woke me up ah oh, every note is different in every key and I knew that you know I knew that an A had to be a little lower in the key of F because it's third of the chord mm -hmm. and but if you're playing with a tuner that A is going to be right there at A440 and you're going to be sharp ah uh, it's so, all relative to the situation exactly and, I th and that's when I said, these tuners, you know what they're good for? Let's see. When the wind comes up, I'm going to put this on this music so it won't blow it away. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the 20th episode of Bone Masters. Can you believe it? Where we get to meet living trombone legends, hear them play, have master classes, and talk about music. This week, we feature the wonderfully talented Charlie Morillis in his second appearance ever on Bone Masters. Uh, I'd set the th uh, tuning CD on D and be like, yeah. this noise in the, in the instructions. It says play play it loudly so you can really hear the vibrations. So and then my wife would come in the room. What the hell is that? And, yeah. Um, but and I'd hold that note out and line it up so you get rid of the vibrations. Mm. Uh, There's two different A's. Make oh, sure they're yeah. both in tune. Yeah. And then you have the perfect fourth there on the G. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest one to get in tune, the perfect fourth. Because that's uh, that's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. But once you get that in tune, oh, you, you hear... You're in tune. Oh, yeah, they get rid and of then, the beats. Yeah. There's the third. Yeah. And even though it's not the third in the tune, but you have the drone of the D natural, go, the D going by, you hear the third, and that has to be a little lower. Mm. So, and you can hear that. You hear, oh, I'm sharp. Va, 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 va. I'm right in tune. Wow. And, and you can play the tune in every different key. Yeah. any of the 12 keys or you can have different exercises for that's great yeah oh god it just it's like the, i got that cd and went out and i played like 10 minutes with it and it's like i could put this away now i know how to play in tune that's awesome that's Don't, great. the tuner throw that away yeah the drone thing's cool huh? yeah and then i went to a uh a, a clinic with joe lessey a principal tremonis in the new york philharmonic he gave this uh uh master class and he says, you know, as far as I'm concerned, a tuner is good if it's a new horn. You want to see where you are. But if you're playing to a tuner, I don't want to be sitting next to you. <laughs> and he said that. And I'm like, hmm. Wow, if he's saying it. Yeah, he, he was just like somebody with perfect pitch insisting on the pitch. Because it's all give and take. It's all teamwork. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, if you're playing along to a track and the guy next to you is out of tune, you, you don't want, you, you kind of have to play to the track. I see. Uh, the, and, and the other guy, hey, you're... Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but for the most part, it's all give and take. And, unless he's and, advice, though, unless it's a new horn, because that's true. When it is a new horn, yeah. it's you whole. You got to figure that exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you got to figure out where the positions uh -huh. are. And, okay, we're, okay, oh, my God, I have to pull this way out, or I have to push yeah, in. you just don't know yet until yeah. you start playing that yeah. thing. And then, and then it's extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. But if you bring your... And a lot of guys do that. They bring a tuner on the stand, and great. 
you know, that's good on a session sometimes when it's really exposed and it's quiet and you have the fifth of the chord or the root of the chord because those have to be pretty much right at A440. But if you have the seventh, no, nah, that's, that's, that's going to be different. If you have the minor third, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the major third, it's going to be a lot different. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just have to make the chord sound good, mm -hmm. make it ring. Uh, and this drone thing is great. You just put it on. Ah, uh, I can put that because there's no. It's all it is is roots and fifths, and you get the drones. And then you put the third there, and you lock it right in. Ah, oh, that's great. And you, and then let's say you're in the key of you have key of F, and you put the third. You play the A. It's right there. Then you go to the key of A, where that same A is up at least that much on the that's slide. That's cool, man. Is it, so yeah. it's twelve tracks then. Oh yeah. Well yeah, and the twelve tracks and it has twelve more tracks of of what it's supposed to sound like, giving you the answers. I never use those. I just use the first 12. And I rarely use it anymore because I pu I'll put it, unless I go to a gig and it's a really out of tune, and, yeah. I, and I think I'm the culprit. And uh, I'll go, okay, no, I'm doing pretty. Usually I just put it right up there, piece of cake. Yeah. Because you, cause you've worked with it enough where you know how. You know how that, to imply it. Then. Yeah. You know how that fifth is supposed to sound. Mm -hmm. Or if I go to a gig and I'm next to a drummer that's really loud, okay, I need to tune up my ears a little bit because, you know, that does take its toll mm -hmm. a bit. Hello everybody, Paul the Trombonist here. Thank you so much, Charlie, for that. That was a great lesson. The next episode of Bone Masters will be introducing bass trombonist extraordinaire Rich Bullock. I'd like to thank all the patrons, I'd like to thank all the viewers, I'd like to thank BAC Music, and if you haven't liked the Paul the Trombonist page on Facebook, be sure you do that, alright? Check this out. When you do this... A teacher asked her students to use the word beans in a sentence. That happens. My father yes. grows beans, said one girl. My mother cooks beans, said a boy. A third student spoke up. We are all human beings. Now remember, you can tune a piano, but you cannot tune a fish.